Hello. Hello. How are you, Chris? I'm doing well, Mauro. How's it going, man? Everything cool. Uh, hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mauro Contreras, and I'm based in South America, more specifically in Chile, uh, in Santiago. Um, I am a natural fast track engineer from Azure Engineering. Uh, I have with me today Chris Sires. How's it going? Uh, I'm Chris. I'm also a fast track engineer with Azure Fast Track. And today we're going to talk about supercharging your DevOps skills with Azure load testing. Yes, and we're not alone. Uh, we also have uh, Xu Hong. Uh, Xu Hong, uh, please everyone say hi to Xu Hong. Uh, she will be monitoring all the platforms. So she will be in charge of uh, answering your questions and get your feedback. Um, so um, today um, it's going to be a very casual conversation about DevOps and um, load testing and how Microsoft and Azure can help you uh, accomplish your objectives. Um, it's, it's, like I said, it's going to be casual uh, and we are interested in your opinion on this. So it's going to be fun. Uh, please uh, send us your thoughts on, on it. And if you have any questions, we can get it answered. We've got a bunch of learn modules and documentation that you can follow along with. So um, if you want to go to this URL or, or hit the QR code, uh, we're going to have that content available for you uh, to go through you know, some of these tutorials, uh, do some of these things yourself. Um, so we're going to give some extra context to that, just give you some of the ideas and theories behind it as well, and, and show why you want to do all this stuff. Right. And like, uh, like Chris said, um, we have um, more content on, on this uh, Learn Live uh, collection. Um, even you will have access to the GitHub repository that we will be using for this uh, session. So. Don't forget to check it. All right. Thank you, Chris. So let's dive in uh, into learning objectives. So like I said, today it's going to be a casual conversation on some DevOps practices that we use every day on um, and, and how that uh, couples to load testing scenarios, um, right? So yeah. we will, yeah. So, uh, we will be checking some some of the practices that we normally face. What what issues do we encounter on companies, right? And um, how 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 do you, how can you use our actual load testing service to, you know, um, try to avoid those issues and get better at, at load testing, right? Yeah, I I think. Uh... You know, then we're going to, as we integrate with the load testing service, we can talk about how to use tests, like how to create simple tests, how to create more complex tests, maybe utilizing ones you already have, and how that can integrate into GitHub and GitHub Actions or even Azure DevOps so that it can be part of your more routine uh, testing strategy for, for quality. Right. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be dynamic. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy it very much as much as we do. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, why don't we talk, Chris, about quality assurance and how and why why it matters matters on um, DevOps world? Well, I, you know we're talking about quality assurance. Notice we didn't say testing because quality assurance goes far beyond just I ran a test. Quality is baked into our software from the very beginning. And, you know, that could be um, in how we design and architect it. That could be through, you know, is it, is it secure and reliable? And and a lot of times, or, or, or the, the horror stories we tell each other, uh, the, the scary stories around the campfire for Halloween are, um, we test it in production. Like, we, we, we don't do testing <laughs> until we're ready to ship it. And by that point, it's kind of too late. And, and we find out what the quality is when our customers do. And, and we don't want that. Right. 
And and even for companies, it's super important the cost, right? Because if you find out about an issue on the end phase of a project, uh, it gets uh, the cost gets higher and higher. If you if you find it in a development stage, it's gonna fixing that issue is gonna be cheaper, right? So that's oh, yeah. also something to consider. And and that's one reason we we talk about shifting left. We shift left on lots right. of things. We want to do yeah. it earlier. Like day one, security, automation, testing, equality, performance. So we want to do all these things as early as possible so that we can right. find that out. Yeah, so the, the whole idea of, uh, uh, of testing inside DevOps is you know, shifting this mentality of instead of testing this at the end of a project or in the end phase of it, uh, at the end of a uh milestone if we say uh move that to the early phase of development so we maintain quality over the all overall the, the whole project development not not only at the end right but, and it's not mm -hmm. just the development cost too right you know right. we're talking about load testing so if, right. if we don't know if our applications can handle load and it's a, a big event mm -hmm like a Black Friday or, right. or like a Christmas or Boxing Day, and our site buckles under the load, it's not just development dollars we're losing, it's real business dollars potentially. Right. It's like an e-commerce site, like, and that's money you'll never get back. That's right, you you, you, you can lose money, but also uh, you lose uh, your customers. Yeah. You, you, you never get to them on board again. You lose confidence and trust, right? Um, so yeah, so we all know that software is hard to do. Uh, it's, it's hard to build good systems sometimes. Um, but also it, it's all, it's also hard to, to do tests uh, and, and, and we, we're going to focus today on load testing and there are reasons, right? There are at least four reasons that we found that, um, that are big issues on companies and customers that we talk about. Um, so these are just four that encapsulates, I will say, other issues. Um, and one of them is uh, managing uh, the infrastructure, right? So well, for... That, mm -hmm. That's always a hidden cost for things. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when we talk about Azure, for example, you, you, you have uh, path services, platform as a service, you have infrastructure as a service, uh, but, but we have many, uh, I, I've talked to many people that need, that still has, uh, by many reasons, there's, there's no wrong uh, way to, to look at it, but they still need to manage their, their, their steel infrastructure, right? Their hard infrastructure, the servers, the wires. Um, and, uh, it, it, ma managing all that it's hard because it, it it involves many aspects right and one of them being a cost right you need to buy things you need to buy a rack buy a server buy hard drives right um and it goes beyond just acquiring the technology yeah. i mean even if you are running uh, custom load tests in in vms in azure um, now you have to patch these machines. Someone has to manage authentication and security. They have to make sure they're all configured. They have to, you know, transfer the files and coordinate all the, the things on the service to make sure they're all working and talking and communicating. Um, and, and that's an overhead. That's that can right. be a big overhead that you're you're paying for. Right, and and also. Um... Once you get all that hardware, or even not hardware, maybe it's virtual machines. Let's say that it's a virtual machine. Um, okay, I, I, I want to try to mimic what's going to happen on Black Friday. So what do I need? I need to provision more virtual machines. I need to orchestrate these VMs in some way. Uh, I need people to operate this, right? Um, so scalability. Scalability is a big issue for load testing because you don't want to only test hundred and thousand of requests per second. You want to do millions, right? For some yeah, scenarios. And you also don't want to 
spin up your your testing stuff on the same hosts. If, you know, if you're if you're doing VMs, you don't want stuff on like the same network or the same hosts. You kind of want it to come from outside. So you're testing all of your infrastructure or all of your your networking configuration. So you want to be able to uh, scale up in a way where you're not um, impacting your own resources, trying to run your testing resources. You want them right. a little bit more isolated. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, also, one of the big pains that we see is uh, many teams need to be involved for load testing because uh, you need to tell uh, you need to reunite all these different teams teams from app developers, testers, operations, security, etc. Um, you, you need to bring it all together and orchestrate them in a way that we can run load testing on on a specific milestone, right? So we 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 built this new feature. There's a big feature coming out on Christmas, right? Uh, and we need to all to all together work to to run this load testing because we have multi multidisciplinary teams, mm -hmm. um, right? So it's hard to do that. Yeah, I mean, like if you're building a single microservice or a single application, you know, your team by itself might be able to do some testing of that one okay. component, like uh, load testing. Um, but when you start looking at a holistic system and you're trying to test your whole thing, this is when, yeah, you need to pull in other teams. You, you know, you're trying to hit that milestone. Um, are you going to set up a security alert by right. uh, doing a lot of traffic? Are you going to have to have the DBAs on hand to track the queries and the performance? Are you going to have to have the app teams monitoring their application and looking for um, rises in errors or something. So you're going to have to have lots of eyes looking at lots of parts of the system, trying to get together that holistic picture. So that coordination is is really important across all those different teams. Yes. Um, uh, and, and that's what makes it hard, like looking at testing the entire um, you know, process and, and solution. Um, and you don't want to disrupt your customers when you're doing it. You know, if you are exactly. load testing a production-like system, you kind of want to move it off into a different subscription or, 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 or environment to test that without disruption to internal users, to external users. So. Right, you're on spot. And also together with this uh, coordination that, that we need to do, uh, normally on traditional organizations, uh, this load test happens on specific milestones. So we, we build this new feature, we 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 build it, we we push to to an environment, and then at the end of the development, we will be uh, probably doing some load test before we deploy to production. Uh, but that happens on milestones. It, it it doesn't happen all the time, and we've been talking about how to shift left this. So how, how do we start testing this more often, not, not only in a single date in a project, but more often on the daily and weekly basis, right? Yeah, that is a traditional problem. Um, I, I've been at many organizations and, and customers where it's right before go live that they decide to load test or performance right. test. And when you have your architecture in place and all the systems wired up and deployed, it's, it's hard to make changes at that point. That's right. where they just are like, oh, we'll scale it up or we'll scale it out. And that might not yeah. solve your problem. And, or what do you scale? That's the other question. How do you figure out what to scale or where the bottleneck is? Um, exactly. Yeah. So to, to, to talk about all of these, um, we, we talk about, about all of these issues, but what, what, can we, what can we do to kind of avoid these issues and and um, do load testing in a better way, in a more uh, dynamic way? So that's where Azure load testing comes into the game. So we're going to talk about a little bit about this new service. Um, so let's let's go uh, to to what what's 
the uh, Azure load testing is. Um, okay. The Azure load testing uh, for um, it, it, it's a, it's a new service that is a fully managed service um, by Microsoft that will help you do high scale load testing uh, without having to care about either security or how do you provision the infrastructure and the software. So basically you provide a test that you wanna do and Azure load testing will help you get that rich information uh, on the load test of your resources, right? Okay. I mean, I, I even see it. It, uh, it it looks like it's using existing JMeter scripts, and it has some quick quick tests as well. So it, it mm -hmm. looks like we can start testing pretty quickly. And you know, some of those other pain points we just talked about with allocating and maintaining infrastructure, um, scaling it out. It looks like this kind of um, automates a lot of that uh, as a service so that we can just focus on the testing and not worry about the management side uh, of a lot of those things. Right. So the, the cool stuff about Azure load testing is uh, uh, one characteristic, characteristic is uh, you can start simple and start growing. Uh, one way to start simple is just do a quick test. And a quick test can be just provide a URL that you want to try to hit and then provide how many virtual users you want to simulate. And that's all. Uh, okay. Load testing will take care of running whatever number of load tests that you want to do and just provide you rich information about what just happened. The other way is what you just mentioned, which is JMeter script, right? You you can if, if you're already using JMeter scripts for your own infrastructure or other third party tool, you can bring those scripts and reuse them inside Azure Load Testing. The other cool things that I, I, I'm, I'm noticing about the diagram that that we know about the services, it integrates with Azure Monitor. So where we were talking about needing to pull in multiple teams to be able to understand what's happening, pulling in the DBAs and the networking teams, because this is pulling in from Azure Monitor um, and App Insight, right. we can start get, you know, getting data about the underlying platform and resources and start correlating them, like the, the service correlates them for you so that you can get that holistic picture pretty easily. Right, so another cool stuff is that while you are running the, the test, the load test, you get almost uh, like a live dashboard um, while you run the scripts. So you will execute it and you will get rich information from uh, Azure Monitor. So you will pull information every X amount of time to, to, to pull information about requests per second, errors, uh, service side and client side metrics. So you can monitor databases, app services, functions, and other services that you can monitor with uh, Azure, um, Azure Monitor. And you will, and it, Azure Load Testing will pull information from it and bring you deep insights about what's going on, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if we have serverless architectures, we're dealing with functions or logic apps, we can we can hit those with load tests. We can get the data back in the monitor and look at it. Cosmos, SQL servers, app servers, containers, all that information we, we, we can feed in and get a holistic view. Um, so it really yes, lets um, us understand where the bottleneck in it is. And as we resolve the bottleneck, most performance bottlenecks move around. You, you, you squish it in one place, it moves somewhere yes. else down the line. You fix something and something yeah. else appears, it's right? CPU, data, network, like you just have to keep tracking it to get to the level of performance you want, so. But it's yeah. important to identify these issues that sometimes they're they, they not simple to identify. And it's not always um, the same, they, they move yes. around. And uh, also something important that you can do is um, you can compare across your history. So oh, okay. you, 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 you won't only have access to the report one time. So let's say if you run a load test a month ago, you can compare it with the one you run today and you will have rich metrics about how, how performance has changed 
from one month to the other. An another thing to point out when you start running these large scale tests is, um, and, and something I've learned from, from low testing applications in the past, um, you can get different behaviors based on like if if the load is going up like if you're ramping up users and load like you might hit a peak number of requests but if you're sustaining requests for a long time let's say you have 50 users and they're holding it for a while like if, if you hold it for five minutes you might see a weird thing that happens at the fifth minute but you might not see that at the third minute because yeah. things are just kind of like building up and building up and it, like the pressure builds up in different parts of your application exactly and, and you can see that. that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah totally that's cool um so we we talk about what what are the main features of this um this actual load testing service but how does it how does this integrate with my azure um sorry with my devops environment either if i'm using github actions or maybe i'm using azure pipelines um so we can uh we we uh we support um github integration and azure devops integration uh, no matter which tool you're using uh <clears throat> we you can automate the load test as part of your ci cd process nice so um we we have our um files maybe you know if we're using jmeter we might have them checked into our repo with our code base so our, our, our tests and our, our, our code are going to live together or maybe even have them somewhere else where we can point at it. Like, so we have options on how to do that. And then we can just yeah. invoke a load test as part of our pipeline. Right. And, and you can do code review on your game meter files. <laughs> oh, fun. I, I love peer reviewing XML. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, sorry. So, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, okay. So, um, what what is uh, mind blowing for me is something that is so important as a load test, uh, and something that years ago when I started on the software industry, some uh, we we doing load testing was the big big the big deal. Uh, like we. We, we waited for a day on the month to do the load testing. But now you can have regression, automated regression testing. So what does, does that mean? Um, is that basically when you build software, uh, you get a baseline, right? Uh, I know that my solution in production uh, has a... Uh, per, uh, a certain performance uh, baseline, right? I know that my API returns a response after 10 milliseconds. Okay. okay? That's fast. So that's nice. That, that's fast. My, my API is always responds 10 milliseconds. Um, I mean, you're using but... functions in Cosmos. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're building a hello world, right? Um, <laughs> but um, you can automate... Uh, load test as part of your CID process. So why will you do that? Well, I want to um, fail fast, right? Like that that's one of our tenants of DevOps. Let's fail fast. Let's get that information as quickly as possible. So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm hacking on some code and I submit a PR, what do I expect? What should I see um, to happen is if I've got this integrated in there? Um, yeah. I get a report from another engineer like a, a month later or um how how are we going to fail fast with with devops and load right. testing integrated so when when you think about a bug fix for, for example yeah developers take the ticket close it unit test run locally deploy to dev and and, mm -hmm. and the bug fix goes uh, the bug goes again away um but it may have implications maybe if you're handling asynchronous multi-threading uh, maybe you fix the issue, but underneath you're doing other things impacting the the overall perf performance. And yeah. the only way to really identify this is running a load test. Even you can run this, you could run this in a pull request, so you can prevent 
a code that is affecting the overall load testing to be shipped to an environment. Okay. Well. And you can define those performance criteria in, in, in the code. We, will, we can see a, a, okay. a more about it. So after we run it, we understand that 10 milliseconds is your target. You might have an error budget or a performance budget and go, okay, I'm going to allow it to go up to 100 milliseconds. But if it goes higher than that, don't even let it merge. Like block right. the PR or fail the PR. Okay, cool. Exactly. What else? Uh, let's talk about a little bit uh, that it's been around for... Uh, it's a new it's a newer feature of Azure load testing. So previously, you could only run tests against publicly facing resources, but now we support yeah. private endpoints and visual nets, vnets. Um, so you can have uh, private resources being hit by Azure load testing, and you can get the same uh, exact uh, features uh, if you have a public facing web application, but now inside a VNet protected from the public. Yeah, this, you can this is get, huge. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of, I mean, we, we do work at Microsoft. We do have a lot of enterprise customers that, that that work on our platform. And sometimes they have resources in VNets or they have layered security and they don't want public facing applications. And in this way, we can let them load test their own resources internally without having to spin up and maintain their own infrastructure. Like that one pain point we talked about creating VMs inside their own VNets, the service will automatically handle that for them and help streamline right. that. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. And I think that this is an understated feature for a lot of customers. Yes. So that this is a cool feature. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that you you have kind of the same behavior that you do with normal resources, public resources. You get Azure Monitor, you get the live dashboard, you get the Azure, you know, DevOps and GitHub integration. So cool. And you know, speaking of those uh, customers wanting security and, and and isolation in their VNets and stuff, a lot of them want security controls. Like, can we limit? who can author tests versus who can run tests versus who can see the behavior. Right. So let's let's talk about a little, a little bit about some security features. So you can do RBAC control on users and roles. So you can have a specific groups or members of your organization to be able to maybe create an Azure load testing instance and delete them. But maybe you only want developers to be able to create tests and don't touch the instances mm. and maybe you have people in QA that you don't want them to either create tests or touch the instance of the service you only want them to read reports of the test okay. results you can do that in a granular way yeah and, and and you already mentioned that we can pass in secrets and configuration and keys um well, I'm excited. Why, you know, we should, we should probably dive in and actually show some some code and and show this service so that we can start playing with it. So, right. What do you got for us? I know you built something. Let's see it. Yeah, a little. <laughs> I, I built a little bit. Uh, uh, demo for for today. Um, so first thing, uh, this demo is gonna be available on the GitHub repository. Uh, that's inside the Learn Light collection. Uh, you will have access to this exact same uh, environment uh, that Chris built on Bicep. Uh, so you will be able to deploy this in your own resource group, in your own subscription, and play with it after. So what the solution is, Chris? So this is a very simple solution just to highlight okay. how load testing interacts to different resources and how to, how to start creating resources and test. So... In this case, I get for you an app service that's going to be running a Vue.js application. Cool. Uh, the site is, um, because we are on Halloween mood, I tried to build something spooky for you. I know that you like uh, to get dressed uh, superheroes, right? Um, so I, I, I built a little software uh, that will help you, uh, a little website to add, delete, 
basically a crude application for Halloween costumes. So this website is going to communicate to a, a serverless API that I built with uh, .NET 6. Uh, and, the, and that API will get information and write information to a Cosmos DB. And all of that is going to be sending information to Azure Monitor and Application Insights, which is from where load testing after will pull all these rich metrics and give you a nice dashboard. So that's basically the, the solution we will be looking at today. So let's dive in. Um, first, uh, this is re the repository that you will have access to. Um, you'll have here inside the project, uh, two different projects, the serverless API and the web application. Okay. Um, just let me show you how the application looks like. So I present to you my awesome custom screwed application that is fully information from Cosmos DB. Um, I only have okay. three customs, so I will ask you help on creating a new one. Okay, yeah, let's create one. I, I got an idea. I got an idea. Okay. You know I love DevOps. Uh-huh. I do joke about this. Let's, let's, let's say, let's do an evil developer. Okay, evil developer. Okay, and manually deploys on Fridays. Oh, that's wow. Description. That's, that, that's, that's creepy. I don't know. I <laughs> hope that I, nobody's doing it. Uh, I think you're going to need to make it a little spookier. Yeah, just slide that right on up there. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a 10. Yeah, no, there, we there we go. There we go. This is a oh, 10. Oh, wait. Hold on. For description, uh, after Friday, th say, then goes on vacation. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is like a 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, my system doesn't support it. So anyway, maximum is 10. Um, OK. You can click Submit, and it will send you uh, to Cosmos DB. We can refresh here. Uh, and then we, you can click at the here. You can see Evil Developer manually deploys on Friday and goes to vacation. And it's a 10. OK. So it's yeah. It's all the read, but I, 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 can, I can see what you got there, yeah. Yeah, um, so then uh, what you can do is, um, well, this is a view application. Uh, you can look at the code to understand more of how that interacts to the function. Uh, but basically, you will be able to update, delete, and et cetera. So everything you expect from a crude application. OK, so what's going on with the APIs? So for the APIs, uh, you will have access to, in the repository to all these functions. Uh, you will see that we have access. Uh, you have access to, to the code. Um, it's using Cosmos DB uh, input and output bindings. So all the communication between the APIs and the database that's all transparent. That, that that's you don't care about how that's done. You just use the bindings, and the function will read and and get information from the Cos okay. Cosmos DB. So That's we've got all... a couple of APIs there, one to add it, delete it. So the mm -hmm. normal CRUD stuff. Okay. Yeah. And, and what I want to do is test this API. I want to give some pressure on it and, and see how it's going to break because I like to break stuff. And yeah. And um, one, one, one of the things that you can do is uh, use Azure Love Testing, right? Um, so how, how do I start on this? Um, so if you uh, go to the Azure portal, mm -hmm. you can look for Azure load testing or just load testing. And then you will see this resource here, this service. Okay. You can create, hit create here. Okay. And it will pop you a wizard to, to create a new, a new service. It only asks for a resource group just to hold the service. Um, okay, so do I need to make a new re so if I want if I have an application, um, mm -hmm. do I need to make the load testing service in that resource group? No, you can create these load testing separately on another resource group and still monitor those other services. Okay, so it connects. So it, it, I have flexibility. I don't have to spin yes. it up in the same spot. I could I could right. put it in a separate spot. Okay, and it doesn't right. look like there's a lot of configuration options. It's, it's nope. just resource group and a name. 
and, and give it a resource group and name and location. That's all. Okay. So once you create this, um, you will end up with something like this. Let me bring, bring it back here. Uh, this is one that I've been working on already, but okay. you will have almost the same thing. Um, so on the overview blade, you will see three main aspects. The first one is, uh, so it's three shortcuts, basically. One is to create a load test from a URL, which is what we call uh, quick tests. I mean, uh, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I can just put it in my homepage and yeah. like a couple of basic pages and make sure that I get fast performance on, on those individual pages, right? Right. What you can do is just get in here, paste some uh, URL, in this case, my uh, API, uh, the, the URL to get all custom is this, this URL. Okay. Uh, you can specify how many virtual users you want to run this. Um, okay. So you can look at the tooltip here to understand more about how much is, what, what, what's the maximum number of virtual users. Um, you can look at uh, how long do you want to test, uh, run this test. So in this case, it's in seconds, so it's two minutes that it's going to run. Um, but just for the sake of the, the the uh the demo i'm gonna give it one minute uh, uh, and this is basically give, give it like uh 20 users 20 virtual users 20 virtual users yeah and and so ramp up time that's like how quickly they add like, give uh, it like five no, or this, ten. this is no this uh this part is um um uh, yeah 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 but so give it like 10 um, seconds and we should see them like uh get at it right yeah yeah let, let's see how how it behaves also oh. notice that here you have some information about, hey, uh, uh, this, this test is going to consume you uh, this amount of virtual user hours. So virtual user hours are the uh, basically the consumption measurement that we use for load testing. So this um, is like part of the pricing model. It's price of the pricing model. So you can get on the, yeah. on the pricing uh, URL and look okay. at uh, because the service has a cost right now, yeah, so yeah. It, uh, it's in private preview. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, it's in public. preview today, uh, yeah. public preview. Uh, so it has a cost. Um, so you can understand more how how okay. does it cost, and depending on virtual user hours, it's there is a pricing. Um, yeah, and, and that's 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 everybody's. Uh, decision at that point, like how much they want. Yes, to you, 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 you need to consider that this is a fully managed service. So you're paying yeah. for the infrastructure, Microsoft managing, patching, security, everything. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, cool. so you made a test. Let's see what happens. Let's see what's going on. Um, so once you create a test, it's going to provision the um, provision all the infrastructure that you need to um, have in, in order to execute the test. So it's going to be ramping up virtual machines and everything, uh, all the networking, and then it's going to run your test. Once it's finished, it's going to deprovision all of that, and you don't have it anymore. But you oh. will keep all the history, all the um, all the metrics and rich information. You will still have that. So we don't have to auto. Yeah, and so this is where all that automation comes in of spinning up the machines, doing stuff to the machines getting exactly. the reports off like we don't have to worry about any of that and ooh, look at that yeah and it will be uh refreshing every five seconds with new data coming from azure monitor you can see that that it started with five users and increased now it's on 20 users right now uh which is our i think it's maximum that that we can figure or yeah. Uh, um yeah. and we can see the response time um of the of the overall application um then you can see all, 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 all sort of, of metrics um number of errors that's going on we have an error here um that's not so good. it's home page error um yeah it's, it's that that's not good probably <laughs> um so, so yeah this is so, really cool and so we're getting live data it, it's automatically doing it um i i know i pushed this out of our normal demo just trying to have some fun and that's okay yeah. So the, the 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 interesting part comes when you start doing um, more complex scenarios. 
Okay. Uh, th th these are really finished. You already have some metrics. You can do whatever you want with the metrics. You can download them, uh, the, the, the logs, the, the results. Um, but the history will it. remain here. And I can share this with somebody. Like I can, I you can... can share this with an, even another team with another third-party tool that analyzes this. Um, okay. So that's and the quick test. Well, and, and... This is the quick test. Yeah. You can see that we have uh, around 10 plus uh, thousands of requests in one minute. Um, and then uh, what you can do is start doing more complex scenarios. And the way that you do that is doing JMeter. Okay. So have you heard about JMeter before? Yeah, I've, I've done a little bit with it, but um, as we hinted, I don't know if I really want to mess around with PRs on XML or, or handwrite uh, an XML query thing. So um, if, if if you're already using JMeter, it makes it real easy. But if, if you see that I want to do maybe some more complex scenarios. Maybe I want to um, have a request and then another request, like a login and add something to my cart and check out. Um, what do you use to build your JMeter? Like you built one for this. What did you use? Yeah, I use for this uh, JMeter uh, client uh, ah. application. Okay. So this is the test plan that I'm going to be running. Uh, so it's yeah. very simple to, to look at. It's better than XML, uh, certainly. Um, you basically create a test plan and then you add some tasks inside of it. In this case, I have only three tasks oh. that will be um, hitting my API. And so sorry I get about a... the visuals. It's a little dark and hard to read, but oh, all right. But we've got um, so th this is where you've been able to go ahead and add a bunch of requests. Now, was it able to record what you did in the browser or? Um, did you have to like paste in the URLs and the stuff? You can pass um, you can pass URLs as environment variables. Oh, so if nice. you're gonna if you're gonna run the same test on different environments, you can pass that on the pipeline, for example, and inject that, and the same same test will run on different environments. Okay, uh, so, so you can you, reuse them. When you did your JMeter file, you defined. I'm not going to yes. use URL. I'm going to define API URL, and that'll be an environment variable that comes in from this from outside somewhere. Right. And, oh, and um, uh, the last thing that I want to like state is um, we 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 support uh, fully uh, we fully support uh, uh, JMeter. So if you currently have tests that running in another 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 platform or even your own infrastructure, but you feel like you you use um, uh, plugins from JMeter. There's no issue. We support all of that. You can bring your JMeters to okay. batch load testing. So we got our JMeter file. So how do yeah. we create a test on that? So you go to create, but you choose the other options is to upload a JMeter script. And for this case, uh, you can give it a name. Uh, a description of why are you going to test this? Why are you going to run it? You're going to be really clear about the meaning uh, and concise of the, the meaning of this test. So in this case, I'm doing a, All the a, a yeah, right. function so, API testing. So um, we might not just test, hit each endpoint and go, hey, I tested all the things. This is really more of a scenario like like add something to cart and check out. That would be a scenario of a bunch of endpoints or or APIs that you, you're you're trying to test that flow, like right. the ideal Black Friday flow or something like that. Right. Shopping okay. cart, empty cart. Um, you 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 you, okay. you can create different test uh, scenarios here. Okay. Um, you can click this uh, checkbox if in case that you want to run the test after you create it, or you just can create and forget. Don't don't run it. Okay. Um, on the test plan is where you actually upload the file. Uh, this is where you upload your JMeter file. And okay. once you upload it, um, some, uh, well, JMeter has an integration where you can upload, for example, an external file, like a CSV file with data, ah. and use that data as an input for the test. 
where this is where you will be adding that external file. Oh, so I can upload um, extra extra things to work with that JMeter file, all of its relevant inputs and stuff. That's really cool. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, this test that I'm using has only one environment variable that is called API URL. That is where I pass the uh, the URL for the for the API. Uh, this is important. Um, you don't have to add HTTPS or HTTP uh, because Azure Load Testing will be adding that for you. So just to consider, if you add it, you may get in trouble. Okay. Uh, just put the URL without HTTP. And, and I um, love that you've got the secrets there that have that Key Vault integration. Yes. Uh, so you can have Key Vault integration. So this, I, I don't care sharing this in in, in the parameters because this is not a secret, but it, 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 if it was something more important, uh, like a actual secret, uh, you could store that in Key Vault and, and it has integration with Key Vault too. Okay. So in, in the load part, uh, you can figure uh, how many instances, uh, basically instances are virtual machines that will be spin up for you. Um, so uh, we didn't have this on the quick test. In the quick test, no. we just said, I want users. And so behind the scenes, it was automatically exactly. figuring out how many instances and engines and stuff I needed. Right. Yeah, right. And um, this is not a equivalent to a thread. So uh, basically, JMeter files can handle up to 20, two, uh, 250 uh, threads, one okay. file. So one script can do two, two and uh, 250 uh, re uh, threads, and uh, you can execute one script per instance. So if you want to simulate, for, uh, in this case, 1,000 threads, mm -hmm. you can configure it to four instances. Four times 250, 1,000. OK, yeah. Exactly. And that, that would explain why they said the max was around 11,000 virtual users. So. You know, I bet if you slide that engine instances all the way over to max, uh, what is it like 45 or so? Yeah, 45. So that, that that's why. So you can have 45 copies of this thing pounding your website. Okay. Yep, that's really powerful. Uh, and you will be able, just in case that you don't, you're not sure about how many should be. I don't know if one instance is is being able to handle this, while you are getting all the metrics of your Azure resources, you can also monitor the instance health. So you can see if the instance is getting throttled uh, oh, to like, the maximum like of you, performance. Or, or if like something happened in your test and you're causing it to crash. Or right. Something. Cool. Yeah. Now I bet, um, and, and this is something I've dealt with when I, I did some load testing um, at previous companies. If you're hitting a website with a lot of traffic, that can appear to be a denial of service attack, a, a right. DOS. Um, now, you know, a lot of times we would like notify our network team we were going to load test something, so we weren't blocked. We would like like let them know we're scheduling it from this time to this time. Don't block our IP. Don't throttle us. Um, do I have to worry about that with this load testing service if I'm hitting my Azure resources? Well, that, that, that's a good question, Chris. And the, the answer is you don't have to worry about. Um, the, Azure, uh, the Azure infrastructure team uh, handles all this and makes sure that the requests that you are doing from within Azure load testing to your resources uh -huh. are not flagged as uh, malicious attacks. So it, it, it okay. doesn't count as a DDoS uh, attack. Oh, good to know. Okay, and then there's that private public thing we talked about earlier for yes. for being inside. But you you the, can assign a virtual network, right? Very cool. Okay. Then um, another thing that we don't have on the quick test is test criteria, and I uh, we we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. It's basically um, okay. You're gonna be running a performance test, but do you wanna have a condition on on, on in case something goes wrong? For example, we mm -hmm. talk about um, the response time. What's cap? What do you want to do in case uh, response time, uh, average response time, is greater than one second? Uh, that, okay, in this case, 
Yeah, because all case, your... you can fail it. Okay, good. Because we were seeing uh, 300 milliseconds. And so if we're yeah. hitting an average of 1,000, um, do we want to sit here running it for, you know, if you did like an hour long road load test, do you want to run it for that whole hour if you already know it's going to fail? Like, right. Maybe we, we so want to fail. This is, this is very important, even uh, even more on the automation. So you, you want to have this kind of test criteria as part of your CI CD process too. Okay. And uh, another important and very important is uh, monitoring. So you don't have this either on the quick test. You only get this from uh, JMeter. Uh, okay. This is where you tell Azure Load Testing what to look at while you're doing the performance test. Oh, to connect, so, kind of like plug it into Azure Monitor and say, exactly. I'm stressing these two components out. I want to look at them while I'm stressing it out. In this case, I want to look at the Cosmos DB, the Function API. I'm going to have uh, the application insights. And uh, you could do storage accounts. Uh, I'm not doing much there, but this okay. is the more important. Uh, I can also do the app service uh, consumption okay. plan. And then you hit apply. And it, uh, also notice that after you create the test, you can keep editing this. So you can remove resources or add okay. resources that you previously missed. And then just click, click uh, and create. Uh, it will validate the JMIR file and start running the test. So, um, if I so your JMIR that you built that we're uploading, how long does that take to run? You can figure that. Uh, in my case, uh, mine is gonna run for seven minutes. So I know that that's a lot for a demo. So um, do, do we I have just, the cooking show thing where, hey, yeah, look, let me pull this magic. freshly baked pie out of the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's magic uh, on this show, too. Um, <laughs> we are the chef. So okay. in, in this case, uh, you can see that it's already executing. Um, it's going to start getting information. i uh, just going to wait a few seconds to show you that it's true. Uh, you can see the engine, which is the virtual machine running the test, how it's yeah. going to behave. And then uh, you can uh, look at the load test results. Then um, so if I go to, let, let this uh, run here for a moment, uh, we can switch back to uh, load testing resource and show you one that I built before on the test. The, um, the one in the oven this... just pulled out and it, it's working great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, this is the test API that I did before. Uh, and then um, what I notice is, well, this test run for seven minutes almost. Mm -hmm. It had nearly 50K uh, requests in total. Uh, so we can see error percentage, response time. Uh, There's that but, ramp up we were talking about. Look at that. You can is, see it ramp up. It ramp up, hold yeah. It sustained. Yeah, uh, we can see very interesting behavior here. We can look at the virtual users that increased, that which is what we planned. Um, in case that you feel overwhelmed about how many lines and and stuff are is here, you can go to the client metrics and just filter by a specific API. In this case, I can see uh, look for get uh, find find users by title. What was that? Uh, what can, was that spike there? there? There's like a big old spike. It kind of just tops right out at you, like you can't yeah, stop right? staring at it. Yeah. So we can uh, try to investigate what's going on. So we have response time um, that increased. Um, the request time, interestingly, also it dropped. So yeah, like there's an inverse relationship. Yeah, and uh, we got a bunch of different uh, access denied five hundred three service unavailable error, um, 74 errors. Um, so if we, this, uh, this is, is all. This is what I'm used to seeing in the JMeter test. I just see I'm making a request, I get a response, yeah. and I'm seeing spikes in, in latency or response time, and I'm seeing a drop in, in request per second. Right. So how can we take this to the next level? How can we get uh, more information to piece together what's happening. Remember we configured the resources that we wanted to monitor? Oh so yeah. Those are on the service side metrics and we have, boom, we have database requests. 
Um, and uh, we can see that there is no big issue on, for example, on the app service. Uh, there's no issue I mean, at all. I don't all. know, man. We're hitting two percent CPU. It, yeah, it could be it could be CPU bound. Uh, um, then uh, if we scroll up, we see that response time increase a little bit of the function, so everything looks fine. But then when we get to the server, sorry, sorry to the database, the Cosmos DB, we see that the RU consumption is skyrocket and uh, hit the maximum, 100%. Yeah. When, you, when you flatline or when you like hit the ceiling and just, that's never good. So we were maxing out our database. Like, yeah, so our database was not prepared at all to scale to this amount of requests. Do you know how hard something like this is to troubleshoot when you don't have this unified view of back-end resources along with the front-end request data? The fact that these line up and let you, you, you see the timestamps, everything lines up. Uh, it, it makes the, the investigation of the performance issues that much easier to find. Right. So wh why don't we, uh, the best approach would be to talk to somebody to help us increasing the number of RUs for our Cosmos database and rerun this test again, right? So you and, won't want, you would do that by, you know, going to Cosmos or even if it's infrastructure as code, you will do that there. Uh, but in this case, you can increase this to, I don't know, let's say 100, right? 1,000, yeah. Sorry, 1,000, yeah. Yeah. And you okay. will click save and and rerun the test in this case we shouldn't theoretically have the same issue so going um, back to testing one thing to also notice is uh if you scroll down we had hit our max users at like 12 37. we had hit our users earlier and they were just continuing to do requests and requests and requests we didn't have to add more users to break the system. We, we were at max users and they were just interacting. And that's where that, what we call pressure, like it, it kept applying pressure to the system and something gave. And in this case, it was the yeah. database. Right. Cause, cause right. that broke it like 1239. But if you scroll up um, to the top, we had all of our users much earlier than that. Right. So, so we, we, um, we've been going for a while. Right. So what you can do after you fix the, the, the infrastructure issue is just run the test again. In this case, I already did. Uh, I, I, read, I run the test again. In this case, I added a little description saying our use increased. Okay. Um, in this case, you can compare your history, like we said before, and uh, compare both test runs against each other to see if we fix or not the, the problem, right? Wow. So if we, uh, let's let's uh, just hit one of the APIs at a time. This one, for example, so it's easier to see. We can see that the new test doesn't have the spike on response time mm. that we had before. And if we ha get to uh, average request per second, also, it didn't decrease, so we we, we were uh, successfully responding to customers. If we go back to the Cosmos DB, we can see that we got nearly forty percent of the RUs consumed, not the one hundred percent. So database is behaving in a good way, and that impacts on the overall application performance being healthy. Um and I love what you did on this. You, you made the comment of, you know, increase the RUs. When you're doing performance testing, when you're trying to troubleshoot issues, I, I can't stress this enough. Do one change, one change right. at a time. Like if you're changing, we did a code change and we did an infrastructure change, which one solved it? You really right. don't know. So you, you had the exact same version of software and you changed the RUs and that problem went away. Um, right. So one change at a time and document what that was. If you don't write it, it, it it's like the Mythbusters. If you don't write it down, <laughs> you, you're just messing around. Like you need to have it written down to document what was changed. So you know what changes were made to the system. Right. 
and awesome. this is all good. This is all good. We we found yeah. an issue. We identified the that the, the that the the application was behaving in a bad way. We identified the root cause, which was a bottleneck by the Cosmos DB. We fixed so, it. But now, what? So how do I, we how do we DevOps this? So we we've got this. Yeah. This is cool. How do we DevOps this? How do I put it in my pipeline? Right. Um, yeah. So the, the cool stuff is that this. This, this is natively integrated with Azure DevOps pipelines and GitHub Actions. So what you do is, uh, let me bring back my Visual Studio code and let me know if you, you, you can see this. Yeah. Um, okay, so the first thing that you will want to do is create a new workflow. In this case, I got this simple workflow called regression test that, uh, it's a YAML pipeline, uh, YAML workflow that it's going to execute on two branches, the main branch and my own regression testing branch that I created for this demo. But this could be okay. any other branch, like integration branch, deployment. Release. Yeah, I mean, this is specific to yours where you're you're tagging yeah. branches and paths. Um, I yeah. see some environment variables there. Those look uh, load testing namey. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm um, I'm passing also. I I only want this workload to execute when I update my API. That's why okay. I'm using this uh, this uh, parameter here. Um, and yeah, I'm favorite, passing my favorite workflow dispatch because that's the only way you can manually trigger workflows in GitHub Actions. Yep. Yeah, you, <laughs> in case that you need to run this manually one day, uh, and you don't want to wait somebody to push code, you can. Set yeah. this and forget about it, and you just click a button. Yeah. Um, I'm passing some variables here on the environment so I can use them below. Um, this is just for the sake of the demo. I'm passing the name of the load test that I'm using, uh, the resource group, uh, my Azure function name. Uh, where is it? Because I, I'm using a mono mono repository project. Yeah. Um, this is not in the on the on the root of the folder, so you need to specify that and my .NET version. I, I need that to deploy to Azure. Okay. So well, I, I only were, have... If you weren't building and deploying it out, you might not need all of those variables. Um, oh, right. OK. In this case, I only have two uh, jobs. One is going to build and deploy my Azure function to my dev environment. So thinking about this is, is, a, is a, I, I'm a developer fixing a bug, and I want to ship that as soon as possible to test uh, and then ship it to somewhere, either staging QA uh, or if it's a hot fix. Um, okay. So what I'm doing here is just checking out my code here, pulling out, pulling down all the uh, repository here, uh, setting up my .NET version so that I can do .NET build. Um, with, with PowerShell, I can just use .NET commands, uh, set up my output folder, where I can, after that, deploy that to Azure, and using my Azure credentials, in this case, coming from my GitHub secrets. Yeah, so you're using a service principle to log in. Um, I've got yeah. a, another pipeline and mm -hmm. uh, a pull request that uses OIDC. So yeah, you, you can, can do both. Deploy to Azure from GitHub. Uh, using either method. Without secrets. Um, yeah. Service principles have uh, secrets in them. Uh, OIDC yeah. doesn't. So you can use either way, though. Um, right. Set them up. Yeah. Uh, there is no bad way, just there's recommendations, right? With, with, with this, you need a secret. With the other one, you don't need it. Uh, and they're all documented yeah. on the Azure login yeah. uh, action page on the marketplace. Right. So after that, I just deployed it to Azure. Okay. Uh, my Azure function, and then when this this is successful, I come into load test. So what I want to do is also log into to Azure and connect to my load testing. This is the load testing GitHub action that you want to use. Uh, this is all documented in uh, in Azure Docs, Azure mm -hmm. Learn. Um, you need to pass. Uh, basically the name of the resource that you want to use. Um, where is it? What, where's the resource group? 
and you can pass environment variables. In this case, remember my my JMeter use um, use um, uh, API the, URL. The URL, yeah, from the API. Um, so to actually invoke the load testing right now, that that load test resource, that's that uh, one you were looking at in the the portal. That was the one we were just using to run a load test. So so the name of that, and then the resource group that is in. Right. Okay. And you're and, 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 nice. Okay. Uh, the other uh, special thing is this load test config of YAML. Oh, that's, um, yeah. That's, that's basically the load test configuration. Ah. This is the name that I'm giving it because it's if, if you don't have this created in the load test, it's going to create it for you. But if you, if you already have it, it's going to override it and create a test run inside of it. Ah. It's going to reuse it if it, if it exists. OK, cool. Um, the same way we did on the portal, you're giving it a description. Also specify the number of engines that you want to run it on. And then um, I'm passing um, the test file. This is the JMeter file, basically. OK. Um, Instead of uploading on the portal, we're just referencing this guy here, the JMeter file from our own repository. Yay. Excellent. So that's cool. Oh. And then um, we're going to add a failure criteria because uh, we want to make sure that if the application surpasses the one second, we want to make it fail. OK. Or if we get a lot of errors. That, yeah. if, you know, mm -hmm. Nice. That is a really simple syntax. Yep. Uh, OK, cool. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm working on a, a specific branch here. What I'm going to okay. do is come to my get customers, sorry, get customs. Um, and on purpose, I'm going to add a, a system, um, a, a thread to sleep for, I'm going to be three seconds. like. Something that's really bad for the system, right? Oh, okay, so I want to add another costume of bad programmer adding sleep calls to demos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I'm going to say, okay, three seconds. Okay, okay. So imagine that I'm fixing an issue. So I'm building code, uh, and, and I mess. I, I fixed the issue, but I created another one, right? Yeah, you did. Uh, not, not on purpose, but uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's software. It, this stuff happens, and okay, we want to be able to capture this, right? Well, let's see it. So fixing a big issue, and then you can commit. Uh, always remember to add meaningful commit messages for your colleagues. Obviously. Um, Otherwise, obviously. that's another bad evil costume that we can add. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it pushed. Uh, I can get back to my GitHub repository. I already have an ongoing pull request. So if I click here, uh, I can see that it's already queued uh, a regression test. That I, you remember, you remember the pipeline that we, we built? Yep. Um, I can figure it as a checklist, so a check test. So how do you do that? So if you go to your repo, to settings, and then to uh, branches, you can add protection rules. Yep. And what I did is I protected my main branch from, first, I need to create, a, if you want to push code to my branch, I want you to create a pull request first. Somebody needs to approve it. And then, even if you approve it, I want you to check all these pipelines to be successful before merging the code. So I want to build the function. I want to deploy to dev. And also, I want to test a load test on it, even before you, you, you merge it. So that's what you're going to do here, um, because you want to maintain equality, right? Um, if we go to actions here, we can see what's going on. We can see that it's building the application, and after that, it's gonna do the testing. Okay. Uh, let me show you one that I did before. That it's the same test, just that it just finished. Let me go back to this one. Uh, I built it. You know the same stuff that I showed you on YAML. Yep. I I check out the code, log into Azure, build it, etc. 
And then uh, on the load test, uh, if you see here, Oh, it does a nice uh, pretty output. So you can see like the summary and the results. It connected to actual load testing and it created a test called CICD load test that we can see actually in the portal. Um, if we go back to the tests, you can see uh, this test created. This one. Yeah, okay. This one got created from the pipeline dynamically based in, in our demands. Uh, you can see all the history, but also it, the, the same pipeline shows you some, some information, right? It says, okay, one of the criteria failed and one passed. You can see, okay, get all customs got three seconds of response time, average response time. And the maximum, remember we said that it was one second. Yeah. So it failed and we failed the pipeline and and uh, we we make sure that this code doesn't get into our our environment. And, we can we see, see a summary here. Yeah. And so by I, by API, we're seeing you know those average statistics. We even see the P ninety ninety five and ninety nine, kind of across the board. Right. That, that's nice. Another cool stuff is that we're using uh, Azure Artifact. So if you drop down um, to the load so to the to the GitHub workflow. Um, you will be able to get the artifact and download uh, download the the package, right? Okay. So um, let me get back to one uh, to another one. Uh, this one, for example, you can download the artifact and look at the logs in your own computer or another software. Um, you can also, if you want. Um, the same dashboard experience, you can get back to the load test, uh, click it. Um, sorry, this is not the one that I wanted. This is the one. Um, and you can see the rich metrics that we saw before for the same uh, pipeline. Uh, you can see that it has the three seconds response time. Yep. Um, basically, cool. same experience. And if you scroll down a little bit, I can see those test criteria listed right there in the pass fail. Yes. List. So I get the summary of our testing criteria. Right. And then th that's how you basically uh, identify uh, regression testing issues here. Uh, the natural solution will be to just talk to the developer, uh, create a new test. My issue, uh, and then you chip it, and the 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 uh, the, the trigger will um, run the load test again, and will be successful. And in this, in that case, you can merge your code. Okay. Like in this um, case. Interesting. Yeah, I um, I was helping do some similar things, uh, you know, and submit some pull requests to your repo. And one of the things I found was that not all the tests worked for me. Um, so I, you know, I, I set up a bicep to dynamically create and deploy um, the entire infrastructure. And so my names were a little different because for you, um, you, you have certain names reserved for your app services and your functions. And, and so, um, I was able to to do a couple of things on my side where I made it like fully dynamic, uh, right, but so... I noticed the tests didn't work. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to talk about that for a second? And maybe then maybe um, I could show you a couple of the things I did that were different, um, just to um, kind of contrast, like how we can make sure we design our our tests in a way that let them work across environments where the data changes. Right. So what would you want to do there is, um, as part of your infrastructure as code, is create the load test as part of the deployment, uh, not created manually, and also okay. create the test inside the load test. So you, you don't want to do the, the you, you don't want to create the load test manually. Um, and then, uh, and, and then integrate it to, to buy some. You want to do it the, the other way. 
uh, what I meant is like your JMX file, your JMeter file. Mm -hmm. Like you have some data there where you're like looking at specific IDs right. or specific stuff. Um, right. That those were failing for me, but those were working for yeah. you. Yeah. And, yeah, and is that where we might use environment variables or we might yes. have points to look up by name. That just, you know, talk about how we can design our tests uh, to be a little bit more resilient that way. Yeah, in that case, uh, for for the uh, for the um, if we look to the test here, uh, what you want to do is instead of having uh, remember this is the the uh, this is the JMeter file uh, code, but uh, you want to do this using the Line JMeter 40. client. Um, so in this case. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm using a URL that I know that I'm going to hit because this exists on my database. But this is something that you'll like, that you will want to uh, be in a configuration file or maybe get data from a CSV file. Like if you know what kind of test that you want to execute, for example, um, I'm going to do a, te a successful test, then you will need to specify somewhere either in the parameters like this one, or either coming from a CSV file, uh, you, you, you can enter an ID that a resource that exists. Or if you want to build like mm -hmm. uh, added more randomness, you can use uh, JMeter functions that you can do. OK, uh, in, in the request, pass a random string and a random GUI. Uh, you, uh, JMeter has those type of functions where you can have test um, uh, right. Sending request with random data on it. Yeah, this okay. is not something that you want to do. Like I don't recommend it, but just making the the test easier for everyone. Well, um, if you want, I can show something on my screen real quick, and we can sure. like look at the bicep version of this and how mm -hmm. this dynamically deploy out everything. Sure. Um, just as an example. That would uh, be great. Okay, perfect. So I've got a bicep file that I added here. This is just going to be checked in. And so we're, we want a Cosmos database. We want an, uh, an app name. So we're, we're doing something with costumes and we're going to you know, need a storage account potentially for our function apps. And we're, we're going to run our function app. So I've got a B1 right. SKU of our app service plan and I'm running .NET. Um, our front end running view, we're going to host in a node web app. Um, and so I dynamically generate out some names for our function app, our node app, our app service plan, our logging for app insights, our storage accounts, um, all of that. And then a load test service. Um, I'm even setting up uh, managed identities to go from Cosmos to the, uh, the function apps. And you know we can define out Cosmos, define out databases, set up containers, um, storage accounts. So all this can easily be deployed out. We can set up App Insights dynamically. Um, okay. we, we can um, wire up Cosmos things. We can set up our load test and we can output these names. And, and like you needed names for things. That's why I needed names. So um, in, in, my, in our pipeline, you know, we've got some paths and I actually split it out a couple of ways. I have um, a deploy infrastructure as code where I just want to deploy out the, the, the services that we're using. And I want to get out of it the name of the web app, the name of the node app, the URL, and the load test for the things we're going to build. Right. Um, I'm logging in with the OpenID Connect, and I'm deploying out our ARM template. And then we're building and deploying out, just like you did, our, our function app. Right. Um, but we're doing a dynamic name because I don't right. know the name at the time I'm building it. Um, same with our web app. We're doing a dynamic URL because I don't know the name of my URL. Um, and we're right. going to deploy it to a dynamic app name because I don't know what it is. <laughs> and then yeah. we're going to run our load test. So this depends on those other services to exist. And we're going to dynamically pick the load test service. And we're going to dy dynamically pick the web app. And we're going to run it. So I did that. And this is what I got. I, I 
see I, I've got the random stuff here. I got a dynamic app insights and cosmos and function app and load all of those got built. But when I ran them in GitHub, that's where things didn't work out well because um, I got a bunch Ten of points, right? I, I got some failures because you had you had that GUID there. Yeah. And you want to make sure that your your tests, you know, are uh, yeah. But you, 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 yeah, um, yeah. So I, I ran it. My virtual user spun up, but I was just getting errors because a lot of my GUIDs. But this is, you know, pretty much from scratch. Yeah. I dynamically built an entire environment and pretty much wired it up. And so yeah, that's. It's a, good, it's yeah, a okay. good example of, uh, you know, automating everything, right? You're, you're automating even from scratch, from infrastructure, you're creating a load test. Uh, you had infrastructure as code. Uh, your load test is also code. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great end to end scenario. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something that um, we, we can definitely leverage. Uh, I was trying to get back to the repo and um, I could show off the, but that's pretty much where we're at. Like you can um, create a lot of these services. You can, um, I broke my pipelines. <laughs> Yeah, I broke my pipelines, so so, so I'm merging some stuff in. But uh, this is where I was at trying to get the load testing working, where I was deploying out my infrastructure as code, I'm deploying my back end and front end, and then I'm invoking the load test and having my test fail because of, of, of different things. But yeah, you, you, can, you can end to end this almost entirely. Uh, this process and, and you can you can spin up like chris mentioned before uh, you can create ephemeral environments for load testing uh you don't have to keep resources living forever in case that you wanna uh this is a good example because you want to yeah. do load tests okay you spin up a new environment you you do the load test in there and then delete the app services yep. delete everything so um that's all i had um if we want to go back to your screen we can um wrap up with the last couple of slides and I, I think um yeah yeah so uh thank you Chris that, that's really cool um so that's all we had for today uh thank you for tuning in I appreciate uh everyone for passing by learning something new uh hopefully you learn something new um get these modules up like like this is a yeah. collection handcrafted by Mauro and myself with yep learn modules, links, um, documentation, like this will give you all you need to know uh, about the load testing service and how to integrate with DevOps. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, don't miss the content. We have the GitHub repository. Uh, we will upload the slide deck that you saw today. Uh, so everything will be there. Uh, also with learn live uh, documentation, so you can learn how to build these pipelines and other cool stuff. So um, before closing out, uh, in two weeks, we have a new session coming up on AKS oh. operations back practices that will be really fun. Yeah, that, that is a, an incredible uh, team of presenters and, and moderators. Like this is really, really good in-depth content. And yeah. it's, it's stuff we've been delivering in person through our, our FTA Live uh, that we're now bringing to Learn Live so that everyone can have a chance to to see this material. It's really good stuff. And a big shout out to Xu Hong for moderating the session. I really appreciate it. We all appreciate you. And um, also a big shout out to the people working behind the scenes on Learn Live. So thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, see you next time. See you next time.